producer and co-star of the HBO show Bullshit and added Libertarian. Oops, I said the word, didn't I? But he had seen it all until he and his silent partner, Teller, began to work on a show at the Creation Museum in Petersburg, Kentucky. During their unannounced February visit, they were astonished to attend a presentation in which one Dr. David Menton used magic tricks to illustrate the supposed improbability of getting functional amino acid sequences in proteins by random chance. Not only were the, were the magic tricks complete crap, he trotted out this ridiculous idea that evolution happens all at once instead of accumulating a little bit at a time to peg. Museum security was later called when Teller was found in one of the museum dioramas pretending to feed a caveman managed into a friendly velociraptor. <laughs> Explained Penn, I don't know why the cops arrested Teller. The real crime here is that we know damn well, and these jokers know, that humans and dinosaurs were separated by something like 65 billion years. That's the crime. The show airs on HBO in August. Adam Savage, who's best known for his role on Discovery Channel's hit series Mythbusters, is also an accomplished scientific explorer who has discovered several new species of insects. The most interesting species I've found is a spider that looks like an ant, except the forest that it has eight legs. It lives in ant colonies, and they feed it, but the ant ants don't have, have no idea it isn't one of them. Savage doesn't have much time for science these days. He's busy making season nine of Mythbusters, which will include a look at the mysterious bird deaths in Arkansas. <laughs> Season 9 rolls out some cool new merchandise, including bobbleheads. <laughs> James Randi, a.k.a. the Amazing Randi and founder of the James Randi Educational Foundation, has announced that dubiously prestigious 2011 Pegasus Award has been given to Oprah's favorite doctor, Dr. Raymond Oz, or Dr. Oz, for his relentless promotion of various forms of energy medicine, including therapeutic touch and other forms of quackery on his widely viewed TV program. This year, Dr. Oz really went off the deep end, Randy said. In March, Dr. Oz endorsed psychic huckster and past Pegasus winner John Edward, who pretends to talk to dead people. Oz even suggested that bereaved families should visit psychic mediums to receive fake messages from their dead relatives as a form of grief counseling. Past Pegasus awards include CBS Pharmacy for promotion of homeopathy, televangelist Peter Popoff, for making $23.5 million by offering psychic debt relief for the financial crisis, and Andrew Wakefield for his fraudulent work claiming a connection between vaccination and autism. Although the Pegasus Awards are announced publicly, on April 1st, Randy says he traditionally uses tele telepathy to notify the winners in advance. <laughs> Next one. Bill Nye, science guy, was briefly detained recently outside Los Angeles' home of actor Ed Bagley Jr. Nye and Begley had been locked in bitter rivalry over who had the greenest home in the smallest carbon footprint, which started when Begley's reality show, Living with Ed, began filming in the neighborhood where Begley and Nye could reside. What started as a friendly game of one-upsmanship has gotten out of hand, said Nye after he was released by police. Ed had me arrested for trespassing because I was trying to get a look at his new rain collectors. <laughs> Begley had no comment on the incident, but did say that his house is the greenest in the United States. It looks like we have 26% voting for Penn Gillette, 34% going for Adam Savage, 34% going for The Amazing Randy, and 6% for Bill Nye. <laughs> yeah, okay, so here we go. Hopefully this is everything all set up for our, our guests now. And who is the winner? It's The Amazing Randy! Well, you don't know me well enough to call me amazing. Okay. <laughs> All right, James. Uh, so now we're going to turn it over to our class and see what kind of interesting questions they have and see what kind of questions you might have for them. So uh, what do we got? Okay, okay over here. So maybe uh, you could move the camera a little bit as we move around. What's the criteria for getting a Pegasus Award? To get the Pegasus Award, well, you have to be rather stupid to start with. And uh, you can, can uh, qualify in that respect, I assure you. But uh, you ha it has to be particularly outrageous. It has to be something which, uh, to any reasonable thinking person, uh, would, would be impossible or outrageous or silly, if you will. And uh, we have a hard time in our minds every year as to who gets this coveted award, of course. 
Uh, we have to farm around, we have to do a lot of research during the year, and we have uh, all of the members of the James Randi Educational Foundation uh, vote for who they would like to see get it this year. And Dr. Mevodov, by the way, has received it twice now, and that, that's rather a distinction, I would say. <laughs> Amazing accomplishment for Dr. Oz. Okay, other questions for Amazing Randy, or Dr. Amazing, or Professor Amazing, or Professor James. Very confusing, actually. Uh, do the people who win the Pegasus, uh, Pegasus Award actually receive it, and if so, is it in good spirits, or is this something that's just bestowed upon them and they never receive anything? Well, we, uh, we, we send it, we send it by telekinesis, you see. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rather shady card, to say the least, and if it doesn't arrive, that's not our call, we send it. You know, and what you do is you just pray over it, and it's supposed to go there automatically. Uh, I was reading about your $1 million paranormal challenge, and yeah. has anyone ever tried to claim the prize? <laughs> has anyone ever tried to claim Has anyone ever yes. tried to claim the paranormal $1 million challenge? Many hundreds of people all over the world for the last 11 years now, yes. Oh yes, it's a very active uh, pursuit of the prize. Uh, I'm surprised that there isn't a lineup. No, I don't see any lineup outside of the store here. Uh, you'd think that they would all be clamoring out there, you know, with the, the plowshares and the axes and things like that, as in the bright practice sign, trying to win the prize. But I don't see anybody out there. The driveway is completely empty. But no, one, hundreds and hundreds of people all over the world, in almost every country in the world now, have tried to win the prize, and none of them have forgotten by the first stage. Okay, other questions for our students as they go forward into the world? Well, I can tell you that uh, this business of critical thinking is extremely important. As a matter of fact, I have been agitating. I agitated with my, my late friend, Carl Sagan, uh, Cornell University, we actually designed a course in, in critical thinking that never really got printed and such, it never really got uh, uh, instigated at, uh, at Cornell, unfortunately, but I'm sure it's in print somewhere. I wasn't able to get a copy of it, but uh, we did design a course in critical thinking. And um, I think that that should be standard. I really do think it should be standard in colleges, certainly, and even in grade school to a certain extent. Children at a very early age should be taught how to think, how to consider evidence, and to always demand evidence. Evidence is the only thing that's going to prove any claim. Now, sometimes evidence is not available. In that case, you simply have to postpone your decision on whether or not you accept the claim that's being made. But that is the, the basis uh, for the test that we do. Evidence, evidence, evidence. Okay, well, that's a fantastic way to end. I want to, I know you're on your way to Spain, but we do cordially invite you to attend the Festival of the Weird next week when we have our poster presentations about our weird investigations, but maybe next year you'll be able to uh, to come. And uh, I'm also to make a note of my copyright. It's very interesting that I have on here. And uh, I want to thank the last one for being very attentive. I see they are translated in our school, I'm not sure. Well, they're just, they're just, they're just Googling away in the yeah, other YouTube the way they usually are. You've got to be sure. Well, uh, I want to thank you for, for, for uh, asking me here. Uh, and we'll do it again uh, sometime very soon. But I also refer all of your students to our webpage, www.randi.org. If you go in there, you'll find that it's all uh, saved. We've got a huge, huge amount of data there. And there is a search bar at the top. You will look up any subject of the heart desires, and it'll probably have been handled somewhere along the line. And oh, and Dr. Oz is listening. Hi, Doc. So, <laughs> let's get to the video.